Yeah, but roads aren't the only place you can ride a bike here on Delmarva. There are also some great mountain bike trails, but it hasn't always been that way. Sean hopped on a bike to find out for himself why these trails on the eastern shore are a great place to learn to mountain bike. Mountain biking. The name alone may conjure up images of a heart-stopping thrill ride. Needless to say, these guys are not on Delmarva, and they're not your average riders. They're professional mountain bikers Eric Porter and Cody Kelly on Coldwater Mountain in Alabama. And while you may not be able to find this type of terrain locally, there are still plenty of people enjoying the sport on the peninsula. The idea of the trails is to get in shape and learn the skills in order to go to the mountains and vice versa, people from the mountains come here on vacation. Trez Dank is the president of the International Mountain Bike Association's Eastern Shore chapter. He says a few years back, he noticed something. People weren't coming to ride here and locals weren't getting into the sport. And he figured the problem was the lack of trails. We would drive two and a half hours to ride our bikes for two and a half hours and then we'd have a two and a half hour drive home and we would think, you know, man, this isn't really very green and I don't want to drive my kids that far and then not have them like it or not be in shape for it. So Trez teamed up with some local organizations to build some trails locally. And as it turns out, the Eastern Shore is a great place to learn to ride. Being that it's fairly level, you know, we lack a lot of elevation. Um, so it, it can't get too dangerous. We don't have rocks. I mean, it's the beach, you know, we don't have, there's no rocks. That are, the yeah. rocks that we have, we brought. Yeah. And um, so there's a lot less things to fall on and get hurt with. So what do you need to get started? Obviously, you need the bike, mm -hmm. and then there's other gear. Sure, yeah, the helmet, uh, essential mm -hmm. part of it. You always want to protect your head. Um, as far as the helmet goes, you just want to put it on top, mm -hmm. make sure it's facing forward, tighten the back so that if you lean forward, it doesn't fall off right away. And that should be tight enough with that. Yep. Okay. Then you bring your chin straps down. Only leave about a finger of space between your ear and the tri bottom of the triangle. And then oh, one finger of space for your chin. Mm -hmm. When you open your mouth, you should feel the helmet pulling. That's mm -hmm. tight enough. Okay. Yep. Uh, you always want to use gloves, and of course you want to bring water and snacks. A first aid kit isn't a bad idea. Uh, a pump, you know, you want to have your patch kit, stuff like mm -hmm. that. And then some, you know, insect repellent and sunscreen. Yeah, definitely, definitely. There are also a couple of basics to keep in mind when riding a mountain bike. So there's three uh, basic principles you want to remember. You always want to keep your pedals level. So if you're coasting, if you're not pedaling, you either want to have your pedals in this position or this position. You don't want to keep the one down, <clears throat> that could cause a pedal strike. You don't want it to, your pedals to hit the ground. The second is your fingers on the um, triggers of the brakes. I'll do it this way so you can see. You want to make sure that you have one finger on each one of the levers. That's your strongest finger, and these are disc brakes. You won't need anything other than that. You always want to pull them slowly in and slowly out, like squeezing a, a tube of toothpaste. You don't want it to squirt out. You don't want to grab a handful of brakes. You're going to become Superman. You're going to go flying over the... Uh, the handlebars, and then you always want to keep your eyes up and scanning, looking for obstacles. With that in mind, we geared up and hit the trail. This is a far cry from my beach cruiser. It's very um, social, so except with the exception of racing when you're trying to pass each other, generally people are riding together and it's, um, it's a way to get into nature, commune with nature, to uh, explore. It's like the white ethereal feeling of um, almost like flying. The, everything's really quiet. You can hear the wind blowing through the trees. If your bike's well tuned, you don't really hear it too much. Of course, there's always squeaky brakes, but um, compared to road riding where you're looking over your shoulder waiting for someone to run you down, that's more of a white knuckle experience, I like to call it. Uh, yeah, this is much more peaceful and serene. Trez, that was awesome, man. All right. Thanks so much, man. Thanks for taking me, and I didn't fall. No. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like a lot of fun. Sean and Trace are riding one of the newest trails in Pokemoke State Forest. If you would like to learn more about